Baltimore City Health Commissioner Lena Wen is with me now talking about the social determinants of health and really how do they affect our health. We tend to think about what constitutes good health as what happens in a hospital. And as an ER doctor, I certainly think that that acute care really matters. But actually, what determines your health is where you spend the rest of your day. We know that public health can be what levels the playing field of inequality, that we can make sure that all children are born healthy, that we give kids the best shot at education. If a child is in so much pain from an untreated dental infection, if they don't have glasses, how are they going to be able to see and learn? And what are the consequences of untreated mental health issues, addiction issues? These are the issues, these are the things that determine someone's life expectancy, that determines what happens over the course of their life. And that's why these social determinants are what we have to focus on if our goal is to improve healthcare access and achieve health equity. What are the steps that you're taking in Baltimore to really help address poverty and some of these social determinants of health? We have three principles. The first is to go to where people are and to make sure that the individuals who are serving our population are the most credible messengers. We have a program called Safe Streets, for example, where we hire violence interrupters who are often ex-gay members or drug dealers who came from the communities that they're now serving. We also have something called Be More for Healthy Babies, where we hire home visitors to do home visits and community outreach because they are the most credible messengers. Second principle is to marry our stories with statistics and to do what is successful. We have been successful in the city in reducing our infant mortality to the lowest it's ever been. Using a collective impact strategy, we have been able to increase over uh, to increase our overdose trainings and to do to make Baltimore a model not only as the quote unquote heroin capital, but as the addiction recovery capital. And we have been able to reduce lead paint poisoning by over 86% in 10 years. These are the stories that we have to tell, but also make sure that we tie this with evidence as well. The third principle is that while we aim for long-term interventions in public health, that we also have to demonstrate short-term success. This is what we're doing with addiction. We know that addiction is a long-term issue. It's going to take years for us to fix it. But in the meantime, we can save lives. This year alone, we have saved, we have trained over 5,000 of our residents on using the antidote drug naloxone. That's one step in the right direction. And we have to tell these good stories as we're aiming for these long-term goals to reduce disparities. And how can you use that health in all policies approach to really improve the health in your community? Baltimore has been undergoing a very challenging time. We know that there are many things that are underlying issues like poverty and poor health. This is our chance to tell that story. This is our chance to address not just the immediate effect of what we see, but actually what is underlying it. So we can look at someone as the perpetrator of violence. But if we look one step deeper, we see that actually that individual is the victim of trauma, that there are huge unmet mental health addiction issues, that there are huge unmet other health needs. That is our opportunity in Baltimore. We have the opportunity, the chance to catalyze innovation that will, be, um, the, that will help us be the model for not only transformation in our city, but also for other cities around the country. Thank you so much for being here.